Hi, I'm Catherine Fulvio and I'm delighted to be bringing you this summer cookery demonstration which has been sponsored by a number of local authorities to encourage the reduction of food waste in your home this summer. Reducing your food waste is one of the most effective actions you can take to help fight climate change. Did you know that around a third of food produced is either lost or wasted, which contributes to between 8 and 10% of global greenhouse gas emissions, which is more than commercial aviation and maritime travel combined? And did you know that barbecues can result in a huge amount of food waste? So I'm going to show you, with a little bit of preparation and planning, how you can cook an amazing barbecue for your guests and take some pressure off you too as a host. Today I have a delicious al fresco menu for you. We'll be making these wonderful dishes. Char grilled vegetable skewers with lemon mayo, homemade beef burgers, a wonderful curried rice salad with yogurt and mint, and a caprese and sweet corn salad. And you know, you'd be surprised at what food you might already have in your presses, ready for your barbecue. This isn't a case of buy more. By doing this, you'll save time and money. And so why would you give yourself more work than necessary? So once you have checked the cupboards, looked in the fridge, it's time to make a list. And by the way, if you're looking for a shopping list, there's a great one on stockfoodwaste.ie. But let's get cooking. I'm going to start with my curried rice salad with lemon mayo. I love this dish. Here at my store cupboard, I have some rice. And the trick is to use what you have. Do you know, quite often when it comes to food waste, we're thinking leftovers all the time. We're obsessed with how to use leftovers and we're so good at it. But if we turned it on its head and try and thought, do you know what, let's try not have the leftovers in the first place. And how do you do that? You look and see what have you got in the fridge, pull it out and put it in your dishes. Use what you have and it saves so much time, so much effort, so much money and it's much better for the environment. Now, I better stop talking and get cooking. So for this recipe, what we need is some celery. I'm going to use some radishes for this recipe as well and some shallots. And this gets cooked away on the hob and then cooled and becomes a salad. So it's a really easy, tasty dish. To start with, we need to prepare some celery. So for that, just pull off your celery and give it a wash. Now with celery, you'll find it can be stringy and it puts people off. So just top and tail it, pop it in your brown bin and then you get your knife and just pull down like that. You see, and that pulls off those strings and it just makes celery an awful lot more palatable, I think. Because those strings, they're like dental floss. They're very, very thick. See, look. So you don't want them in your salad. So pop them in your bin and then get your knife and we'll chop away. So knuckles full for tips back at all times when you're chopping. And just keep creeping your fingers back. And it's really nice to use up celery because quite often with celery, you buy it, you use it maybe in a stew, you have it left over, and you're thinking, what else can you do with it? And some people just aren't into celery, but honestly, once you cook it, it tastes so gorgeous. So the great thing about making salads like this, it's a wonderful opportunity to use up all those little bits, like you buy a bag of shallots and you're left with them. You maybe got three or four left, you're wondering what to do with them. It works brilliantly in this. Let's get our pan on, get a bit of heat in, and you can use a bit of rapeseed oil, which is lovely Irish oil, or some olive oil can go in here either. Get a nice bit of heat in. And our trusted wooden spoon. And when you see the oil starting to move, that's when you know it's ready. So as the oil warms up, it starts to spread out in the pan and you'll see a nice shimmer. And after that, the next thing you see is a little bit of white smoke, so you'll want to be cooking by then. And I have some shallots I've already chopped up. So I'm going to just pop them in and get them going. So that's them started. And what we're trying to do with the shallots is we want to soften them down. So we're not looking to brown them, just soften them. So start on a high heat, get the heat coming out. And when you see the steam starting to come out of the shallots, then you can reduce the temperature and just leave them to slow cook. So the key ingredients in this curried rice salad are lots of lovely veg, we're going with celery, we're going with shallots, we're going with a bit of garlic. So good way to use up the garlic. But I'm also going to the freezer because I have frozen peas, which I can grab now that they're beginning to soften a little bit. 
So I turn the heat down and I'll get my peas and have them ready. I love my freezer. Use it all the time. It's a great place to store those wonderful leftovers and then have like a tapas evening with all lots of little bits from the freezer and um, different tastes of different flavors mixed together on a Friday night. What a lovely way to enjoy a meal. And that can be al fresco or indoors. But certain ingredients like peas are wonderful to have because at least you know it's nice and healthy. You're getting your, your veg into your diet, but they're as tasty from the freezer as they are fresh from the garden because they're frozen when they're fresh so they've got all their nutrients in there so they will be cooked off in this salad now in a few minutes and I know I keep calling it a salad and you're thinking how can this be a salad it's on the hob but in essence it's a flavored rice that we're cooking and then we spread it out and let it go really nice and cool and then we can dress it up and serve it as a salad to the table so this is just beginning to soften down nicely we're just there now and we can pop in our celery. Now, while that's happening, I also have some radishes. So some of you might have these in your garden and you're wondering, what do you do with them? They're really lovely, they're so nice in salads because they bring a natural pepperiness, but also just look at the color. I mean, they're so gorgeous. So I've washed these already and they're ready for action. So all I need to do now is just trim them top and tail them and then I'm just going to slice them and I'll pop them in near the end because I want to keep that nice pepperiness and I also want to keep that lovely bright pink colour. And then we have our little brown bin again which is a wonderful useful piece of kit to have in your kitchen, your little caddy. So now just cut our little slices here and we'll have these ready. Knuckles forward, fingertips back at all times. There we go. And here's another ingredient. I've chopped it already. This is the garlic. Now with this recipe, I would encourage you to use what you have. So if you have some ginger in the fridge, why not grate a bit of ginger in here? This is just about building up those flavours and flavours that you like yourself. But the garlic is a must as far as I'm concerned. I adore garlic. And again, you buy the bulb of garlic. You might only need one clove for a recipe. Did you know you can chop it and freeze it? And it's great. You can then put it in a stir fry straight from frozen. So we give this a little quick stir around. Garlic cooks very fast. I'm going to put another tad of oil in here. It's just looking a little dry from my eye. The nice thing about this salad is you can make it in advance. So you can make it earlier in the day, cool it quickly and refrigerate it. And another one of my bugbears about food waste is, ta-da, the spice drawer. Do you know what? We all buy so many different spices and every time we're out we think, I don't have any of that at home and I buy another jar and you come home and you find maybe 10 jars of cumin in the back of the press. So remember to rotate, put the old ones out front and remember that once they're already ground down like that, about three months, that's all you have. So try and use them up. So this is a bit of curry powder but because Catherine doesn't do heat too much, this here is already measured. So this is a Madras curry powder, so pop that in. And this is going to give a really nice colour to this as well. That looks great. And now for colour, I'm putting in some turmeric, which is also very healthy. So let's get that in. You get that gorgeous golden colour from the turmeric. So give that a stir. Oh, it sings of summer when the turmeric goes in. And that lovely aroma is just so good. So my top tip, use your spices as much as you can. So my top tip for using rice is to have a measuring spoon to hand because we're all great at eyeballing the rice same with the pasta we literally just kind of go oh yeah that looks right whereas the problem is we're left with a huge amount of rice afterwards and wonder what do we do with it but if you measure it properly in the first place you won't have it left over so let's get this in Now, that 
should do it. And we'll give that a nice stir. Get those flavours infusing. A bit of salt and pepper goes in at this stage. Do the tiny bit more salt, I think. There we go. So just stir the rice in with all those spices. And you can already see the rice beginning to colour beautifully here. Now I have my frozen peas. In they go. Whoops. <laughs> there we are. Give them a stir and boiling water. Very important. Get the boiling water in. Give it a stir. Bring it to the boil. Then we put the lid on and just let that cook. So it'll cook in about approximately 11 minutes, depending on the rice you're using. So you bring it to the boil, and just as it's at the boil, you can then put the lid on, like that. Let the magic happen. When it's cooked, which is in about 11 minutes time, I'm gonna cool it really quickly. Then I add in my beautiful radishes. In the meantime, I'm going to make my mint yogurt, and this is gonna be a gorgeous salad. Now, one top tip to remember is, this serves six. So do remember, if you've got a buffet of salads, this will serve 12 because you have lots of other salads to go with it. Don't forget that one. Oh my goodness, this is looking great. I mean, if you just had that for dinner anyway, it would be gorgeous, but I'm telling you, it's a delicious salad. It is not yet finished. That rice needs another couple of minutes. Meantime, I'm going to make my lovely mint yogurt. Now I am lucky, I have loads of mint in the garden at the moment and it smells so, so good. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna get a little bit of mint and chop it up. So just the leaves, roll them up, knuckles forward, fingertips back and chop. And away we go. And I think with herbs, they're best chopped fresh and used fresh. But did you know you can freeze herbs brilliantly and you can make flavoured butters, compound butters they're known, the chefs call them, but they're just flavoured butters. So you could actually chop up some mint with a little bit of cinnamon and some icing sugar, mash it into some butter and keep it in the freezer and serve it over pancakes. Oh my goodness, it's just divine. So for this, we have here some gorgeous Irish yogurt and a nice bowl. Let's get ourselves a spoon. This is very easy. In goes our yogurt. And again, there's a high chance there's a bit of yogurt sitting in the bottom of the pot in the fridge that we bought with the best of intentions starting off our healthy Monday and by Thursday we're left with the yogurt. So in goes our mint into the yogurt like this. Absolutely lovely, give it a stir around and then this gets served with our beautiful curried rice salad. So we can put that aside into the fridge until we need it. Let's see how we're getting on, I think it's done. Oh, definitely. Okay, heat off time. So give it a little stir with the fork, look at that. It's absolutely bone dry underneath, so the water is cooked off, which is exactly what you want, and we can fluff it up nicely. And look at the color of it. And the smell is wonderful because we have all those gorgeous ingredients in there, in particular, that curry powder. So now we need to cool this really quickly. So I have a tray, just a nice clean home tray, and you just pop your salad out onto your tray and spread it out as best you can. Now the trick with rice is to cool it as quickly as possible so that it's safe to eat. So by an open window would be great where there's a breeze blowing in and then refrigerate it immediately. And this is a lovely big recipe. And as you can see, we've plenty here to go around. It serves six, but as part of a buffet, I'd say you'll get 12 out of this, no problem at all. But the other thing is, if you just bring this to the table in portions as you need it, as in don't bring everything out, but just keep replenishing as you go, the leftovers of this are very safe in the fridge and they make an amazing stir fry the next night. So you've got dinner the next night sorted too. I love a good tomato salad. So I'm making a caprese salad with a twist, caprese and sweet corn salad because I get to use what's in my store cupboard and I have plenty of sweet corn in my store cupboard. Have it in the freezer as well. I love it. I use it in pasta sauces and all sorts. I absolutely love it. And it just brings a natural sweetness and it's a good fibrous vegetable to have in the diet. So to start with, I want to make a nice dressing. So for the dressing, we have here some gorgeous extra virgin olive oil, or you could use your local rapeseed oil either. So pop that in. 
Now, in the recipe, it is red wine vinegar. However, in my store cupboard, I actually have a beautiful strawberry vinegar made by a local supplier here in Wicklow. And I thought I would use that because it'll be gorgeous with the tomatoes. So you pour some of that in. Oh my goodness, that smells so good. How unusual. Oh, it's just like you get a bang of strawberries off it. You don't think it's vinegar until you taste it. <laughs> so then the next thing we need in here is, and I've already chopped it. And again, using up that other bit of garlic, little clove of garlic goes in. What herbs have you got in the fridge? Of course, you keep your lovely soft herbs wrapped in damp paper in the fridge. So kitchen paper, and I have some nice parsley here. And it grows really easily outside too. A little bit of honey goes in. And by the way, if your honey has crystallized, do not throw it out. You can just warm it up. You can put the jar in a saucepan of just off the boil water and it will melt. Or if you're used to using the microwave, you can pop it in the microwave and soften it that way. And then it decrystallizes and you can use it again. So now we need a nice bit of salt in here and a little bit of pepper. And you know the great thing about this dressing? You can make this and keep it in the fridge and use it another time. So I always dress as I go when it comes to salads, especially green salads. So just give that a nice whisk up there. There's fresh ingredients in here, so this will keep in the fridge for about a week. Fabulous. So you see the way that's emulsified? That's ready for action. Now, for the next part of the recipe, I have here some beautiful tomatoes. So key ingredients, gorgeous cherry tomatoes, sweet corn from the can, and then I have this beautiful mozzarella, and it's so gorgeous, those little tiny cherry mozzarella. You can buy the normal mozzarella and tear it up either. And all we need to do now is prepare everything. So let's get a bowl and we just start cutting up our tomatoes. So with tomatoes, I often think, again, we have the best of intentions. You know, the sun is split in the heavens and we think, I feel like loads of salads this weather, the summer is here. And then we go shopping and end up buying way more fruit and vegetables than we need to reflect our mood and the outdoor atmosphere. And then maybe the weather changes or our mood changes and we're left with all this fruit and veg in the fridge. So it's just knowing how to use them properly. And something like this is a really, really delicious way to use them. But did you know that tomatoes are a fruit? and should not be stored with salad in the fridge because it ripens your salad. Tomatoes release ethylene gas, which ripens other vegetables in the fridge. So store them separately if you can. So let me show you as well with regards to storing of vegetables. I have here some salad leaves and it's how do you keep them fresh in the fridge? So I already washed these and just pat them dry. And I just have them here with a damp tea towel over, or if you have a beeswax wrap either, you can pop that over, and that would keep it nice and moist in the fridge and crisp. And if your salad has got to the stage where it's gone all soggy on you, you can put it in ice cold water, and it just revives. And take it out, pop it in your salad spinner, and you're good to go again. So now I better get on with this salad. It's looking good. This is a really easy salad and it's so colourful. And I think everybody loves the flavour of those sweet summer tomatoes. And it's a great way to celebrate fabulous Irish fruit. So now we need a bowl to mix. So we have all our lovely tomatoes. Look at that. There we go. Get them all out. And then we have our lovely mozzarella. In that goes and our sweet corn. There we go. And now one more key ingredient, and that is fresh basil. And it, this grows in your greenhouse or by the kitchen window really easily. And I absolutely adore it. And it's so nice. So when you're serving this, the basil goes on at the end when you're putting the dressing on. Because you want it to be nice and fresh. Let me really see, about that much. You kind of eyeball it. I think that's probably enough because it's quite, quite, I suppose perfumed. So we need to give this a little rinse. Always wash your herbs. Okay. And then you can tear it up or I'm just gonna put them in as leaves because I just think it looks so pretty. And then if I tear it, it can start to blacken a little bit. So I think that looks so nice. 
Lovely. And then let's give it a mix. Look at the colour on this. Is this not summer? I think that is beautiful. To me, this is perfect for when you're having friends coming around. But actually, do you know something that's really important to remember as well? When your friends are coming around, or family, invariably they want to bring something. So find out beforehand what they're bringing, because if they say they're already bringing the coleslaw and they're bringing potato salad and so on, you might not need to prepare any salads and you don't want to be wasting all that food. So just plan properly knowing what else is coming to the table. So that there is our beautiful caprese and sweet corn salad. Here's our dressing and I will mix them on the last minute. And I might not use all that dressing, I can keep some back and use it for another day. Next, let's get on with preparing the beautiful beef burgers. There is something really magical about homemade beef burgers and mine have a little twist because in my fridge I have leftover cheeses. You know you buy the block of cheese and you're left with a little bit. So I have a top tip for this one. I'm going to put different toppings on different burgers. I'm going to cook to order. And that is the beauty of barbecue. The whole idea is you don't cook everything in advance or put everything you have on the barbecue. You find out what your guests want and you cook to order. Nobody's in a hurry, you just cook as you need. And you can always go back to the fridge and get another portion and cook along. So now, here we're starting with our lovely beef. I had an onion in the fridge, gonna pop that in. Some nice onion, that's perfect. Some chives, I have fresh chives in the garden, so I wanna use what I have for a nice bit of flavor. And I just love the color of chives and that subtle flavor that you get from it. I chopped up a clove of garlic. So we're gonna pop that in. Some tomato ketchup. In that goes. And by the way, you see I have a little bit of onion left here. I'm just going to put a damp towel over that. I'll keep that in the fridge and I can use that as the base for making soup because I can use my leftover veg along the way and make some soup. So it's a great little tip. So just a damp towel over the top keeps it nice and fresh. Now there is one more ingredient that I have in my store cupboard and it is a godsend and it's called Worcestershire sauce. So we get that in and a nice good Shaking of that, oh, the flavour, that's beautiful. So we get that back into the store cupboard. It's just a great feeling using what you have from the store cupboard. Now we need a decent bit of seasoning in here, so a good bit of salt goes in. And a nice bit of pepper. And a top tip when you're making burgers, mix up your mixture really nicely, and then just take a tiny bit and get your frying pan on and fry it off and check it to see if you're happy with the seasoning in it. Because maybe you might like more salt, more pepper, more Worcestershire sauce, some chilli powder. You can add what you want in here. So we'll get our gloves on here. You don't have to wear the gloves, but I just find when I'm handling raw meat and especially when I really want to massage flavours well together, I find these gloves very handy for the job. But if not, good clean hands will do the job nicely and wash our hands very well afterwards. So in she goes like this and mix away. Smells gorgeous. And not everybody likes onion in their burgers, not everybody likes garlic in their burgers. This is where you get the chance to create your own flavours. And when it comes to barbecue, when you think about it, we all think everybody's going to be starving and nobody wants to be the host or the hostess with the mostess where people are afterwards saying, well, I left hungry. You know, it's just, I think it's ingrained in us here in Ireland to make sure that we almost overfeed our guests. Whereas in fact, we overthink it. Most people are very happy with a nice burger and maybe a lovely bit of maybe chicken drumsticks and maybe a little kebab and that's plenty for them with salad. So just cook to order. Have everything ready, have it in the fridge, and when your guests arrive, you ask them what they'd like, and then you just start cooking it. And you know what's so lovely about a barbecue? Sure, nobody's in a hurry. They can just sit around and they're chatting and everything, and then the food comes off the barbecue and everybody's happy. And you know what's lovely about making something like burgers? The leftovers, uncooked, can be frozen and used another time, or kept safely in the fridge for up to two days, and you can have it for a barbecue another day. But what I do with my leftovers, I actually reshape these into meatballs. And then I can have a lovely meatballs and tomato sauce another night for dinner. So I get a second dinner out of it if I have some extra meat left that I have not cooked. 
I think that is nicely mixed. Now all I need to do is shape it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pop it out here onto my tray. And my little tip is just to get it out onto the tray and try and shape it as best you can into a rectangle. And then just using your hands, cut it into six. Do you see what I'm doing? That way then, more or less, your burgers are the same size for everybody. Because invariably what will happen is you'll start with some super sized ones and the last people come and we'll get these tiny little sliders, which is not what you want. And also, it's not just that, it's health and safety. You want to make sure they're all more or less the same size so they all more or less cook at the same time. So here's burger number one coming. Now I'm making these slightly earlier because I'm going to pop these in the fridge and just let them set. That way then they'll hold their shape nicely on the barbecue. And as you can see, they're reasonable size. They're not too big, they're not too small. The flatter you make them, the quicker they'll cook as well. I think that's a nice size. They shrink a little bit on the barbecue, but if you're serving these with lots of other things, such as we were saying, maybe some chicken drumsticks, maybe your vegetable kebabs, that is ample. So there are burgers and we're gonna let them settle in the fridge covered and take them to the barbecue and cook them. And then later I'm gonna serve them with my selection of cheeses and I have some lovely salad, I have some red onion, I have ketchup and mayonnaise and I have some lovely beefsteak tomatoes as well. So it's a classic burger and brioche buns, of course. You know when you have those bits of veg left in the fridge and you're thinking, what do you do? Well, you can always do the stir fry, but it's summer and it's al fresco time and these make fabulous kebabs, so I'm making char-grilled vegetable kebabs with a beautiful lemon mayonnaise. And why wouldn't you? It's a great way to use up the veg and you've got a great array here. Here's the other thing. When I go shopping quite often, there's a deal on on the peppers. I could buy one pepper maybe for 99 cent, but I can buy a bag of three for one euro and five cent. So I go for the bag of three. Except I never had a plan to use the other ones. This is where the kebabs come in because these are beautiful for colour and there's different flavours from all the different peppers as well. Courgettes are fabulous, red onions look great, and then the few cherry tomatoes in the garden. I grab some bay leaves, and that's really the core of what we're doing. So it's a great way of using the veggies. It's really nice as a side dish, and also our vegetarians will be very happy with this. And if you want to, you could add in some halloumi cheese as well to make it more uh, substantial for somebody who eats cheese who's a vegetarian. So now, let's get cracking. We will start with a little bit of color. So I'm gonna start with some yellow pepper, and let us go with a little bit of the red onion. And I've soaked my skewers, so it's a good idea to give them a little bit of soaking because that way then they don't burn on the barbecue. Let's go with a bit of green pepper. Let's go with some of our courgette. So. Nice and steady. <laughs> I'm going with a little bay leaf. That's quite a big one. Let's go with the cherry tomato here. And I'm gonna add in some nice red peppers as well. So we just take the seeds out by cutting around the stalk part, pull them out like that, and they go into our lovely caddy here, our brown bin, which is the best way of making sure that your food goes to compost in a nice safe way so it's much better for the environment. Now let's cut up some, some knuckles forward, fingertips back, and we just cut little squares. And do you know what? The kids could help you with this job. It's a really handy little job to have. Oh wait, what size? I want to match size-wise. There we go. That'll do me nicely. And I think we need that one like that. Love a bit of red pepper. So now, need another little bit of courgette. We have to match. I want to make these nice and substantial. Move them down a little bit, give myself a bit of room. Okay, match again with the bay, and off we go again. And that there are your delicious vegetable skewers. And you can have those made a little bit in advance, keep them covered with a damp kitchen paper, and they'll keep lovely and fresh. You can keep them in the fridge and take them out and cook them only as you need them, so that they don't go to waste. So when anybody wants one, just pop them on the barbecue and cook them. And you know what? 
the leftovers are gorgeous in a stir fry anyway so you can definitely reuse the uncooked versions of these and for lots of tips on how to keep fruit and vegetables fresher for longer check out stopfoodwaste.ie there's a section there called the a to z of foods and it's genius now i need to start making a beautiful dressing for my kebabs and what i have here is some lovely lemon juice some olive oil and i'm going to put in some fresh thyme from the garden and again herbs keep beautiful in the fridge wrapped in kitchen paper just damp kitchen paper but the likes of thyme thyme butter is beautiful or a thyme oil really really nice so i'm going to put in a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper in here so we need to use this as a base for our veggies when they're on the kebabs however you can use a pastry brush which i have lots of and they're really nice but look at this stinky little thing i made I had lots of herbs that I wanted to use up. So here's a little bit of rosemary and a nice bit of parsley. And I've got a bit of thyme in there and I just tied it together. And all I do is I just mix this like this and then I can baste with these fresh herbs straight onto the lovely vegetable kebabs and you'll get that extra little bit of flavor. And it's a wonderful way to use up those little bits of herbs that you have left. So we we'll put that aside while we focus on making our mayonnaise. So here I have just a little bit of mayo and I have just a lemon. And what I need is a microplane grater and all I do is just grate a little bit of lemon zest. This is like the cheats version of something really tasty, but it's regular shop-bought mayonnaise with lemon zest in there and it is so nice. And if you wanted to, you could add in some chili powder in there or fresh chilies for an extra bit of zing. And it's beautiful as a side sauce with the vegetable kebabs. That looks great. We just need a teaspoon. We we'll scrape the last of that lemon zest off. Honestly, I just love the flavor of lemon. It just adds so much to a dish. And this lemon mayonnaise, you will not be disappointed with. And of course, it's very versatile. You can have it with other things. So if you're having a bit of fish on your barbecue, a lemon mayonnaise would be beautiful with it. So there is my lemon mayonnaise ready for action. So now my burgers are prepared. My kebabs are prepared. All I need to do now is fire up the barbecue. I can start cooking and then we can plate up and have everything ready for when my family arrive. And this proves you can barbecue in any weather. I have my barbecue already preheated and I'm going to start with my kebabs because I have friends coming later who are vegetarian and I don't want the meat to interfere with my vegetables. So I'm going to cook my vegetables first. So here's our kebabs. And then you remember we had that lovely basting mix here. So we can just dot that on like this there we go nice and easy and up we go and we get our kebabs on you can also cook the kebabs separately on a special tray you get these barbecue trays which are brilliant that way then you can be 100 percent sure that there's no cross contamination as well um, for vegetarian visitors and for vegan visitors that's it because we don't have any cheese on this today so it's perfect for vegans too so we get these on and then we can do a little bit more basting on the top don't these look absolutely amazing and handy tip, good idea to have a little bottle of spray water just in case there's a flare up with the oil, you can just dampen down like that. But anyways, let us close the lid here and let the magic happen. Let's see how we're doing here. Okay, I'm going to just turn them now. I like to keep them moving a little bit. There we go, that's one for everyone and if we need more, we can always take them from the fridge and cook them later. So we just leave them to cook. And these are done. There's a nice bit of colour on them, but there's still a freshness in the vegetables, which is what I want. So I can lift these off. See how easy they come off? That's where that basting really helped. There we go, char grilled vegetable kebabs are now complete. We can start with the burgers. And here's our gorgeous burgers. And I have a little bit of oil and a brush and I'm just going to gently brush with oil. That prevents them from sticking 
to the grills on the barbecue. You only need to brush one side because you can brush the other side when they're on the barbecue. This oil has already touched raw meat, so you can't reuse that for anything else. Just remember that. So open up the barbecue. The wind is really picking up here. <laughs> I'm glad I tied my hair back. Okay, so we get our burgers and on they go. Long handled gadgets are brilliant for barbecues. Saves you having to lean in over the heat. So I'm popping these on a high heat first of all, just to get a nice bit of color. And then to ensure that they're cooked fully inside, I'll move them to a low heat or an indirect heat. And at this point, we can brush a little bit more oil on. We put the lid down and just wait for them to cook. Let's have a look. Oh, they look great. Let's get in there. Oh, look at that. See how easily they just slid off there. That's because we oil them just slightly. So we can put the lid back on now and we wait for them to color. Now I have that on a high heat. So I'm just gonna turn that down low now because temperature will drop because I want them to be fully cooked inside. So I think they need easily another good 10 minutes and then they'll be ready. And the burgers are looking fabulous. So I'm just gonna lightly toast the buns. So my curried rice salad is ready. It's cooled and I have my beautiful radishes to go on top, but I have one more thing I want to put in, in my store cupboard, ready to be used up. I have a jar of almonds. These are already toasted, these flaked almonds, and I have them with yogurt and different things, but they're really nice here as well. So I'm gonna pop a few on here and I'll keep a few back then for garnish at the top later. There we go, oops, that's nice. And we can just mix that around. So just put out on the plate what you need for serving. The rest you can put in a container, which I'm going to do. Keep it in the fridge nice and fresh and bring it to the table as needed. That way food doesn't spoil and guests will have delicious fresh food. And what's left over can be used the next day in a gorgeous stir fry. So I think that's enough to start with. Pop that there and we'll get the rest into the container here. Now, to finish, just a few more of the radish. Look at that for colour. It's just that pop of pink. And then, some of my flaked almonds. Absolutely lovely. And I can pop some in here as well, ready for serving later. Lid on. This is going to the fridge, and I'll bring it to the table as needed. This is going to the table, and then I have that beautiful mint yogurt to serve with it. And I have a nice little bit of fennel here, just for garnish. I'll just pop that on the top. And that there is the curried rice salad. And here's our lovely salad. And I give my dressing another little mix up. And just put just enough dressing on. I don't like too much dressing on a salad. You can always put it on the side and people can spoon extra on it if they want or you can keep that in the fridge and we'll have it another night. The hard work on this is done. If you could call this hard work, I think all we did was just slice some tomatoes, but we can pop it all in here now. Oh, look at the juice of those tomatoes, it's so gorgeous. Such a summer salad. So beautifully colorful. and a nice sprig of basil. Just give that a little rinse. Remember we said, always wash the herbs. Pop that on top. And that there is our caprese and sweet corn salad. Ah, 
and here are our beautiful char grilled vegetable kebabs. But we're not finished. We have that lovely lemon mayonnaise that we made. So in that goes. Very nice. And a little herb for the top, I think, for a little bit of colour. And there they are. Char grilled kebabs with lemon mayonnaise. And last but not least, the burgers. So I have my burger buns here, pop them down. There's my burgers, I have all my cheeses, everything. I'm gonna cut my tomatoes first. So using a serrated knife, just cut slices of tomato. That's fabulous. That should do it. And now to assemble, and the nice thing is you could always put this out and let people assemble using what they want because then you can use your leftover onions for something else and so on, but I'm just going to show one. So here we go with our mayonnaise. So a nice, generous stretch of mayonnaise on our buns, I think is really nice. Then from the fridge, I have our salad with our damp cloth over it. So we're going to get a lovely little bit of our baby gem. You can go with any salad you want, but I like the baby gem. So pop that in and I've just taken the spine out of it just so that it sits nice and tidily on the bun. Make sure it's the right side up. The last time I did, I did the wrong way up. So I've got the, got the base correct. Not talking too much and not focusing. So let's get a nice looking burger. Oh yeah, that looks nice. Pop that on. That's beautiful. And our tomato. So this really is as you like yourself. I like a generous amount of tomato on top and I like a nice bit of red onion. I have a selection of cheeses because I wanted to use up all the little bits of cheese that I had in containers in the fridge. So I have cheddar, I have parmesan and I have a bit of feta. And I love feta, I love the saltiness of feta and I'm just going to crumble a little bit of feta here on top. And for me, that is the ultimate burger. And we can put the lid on, as they say, and serve it up. And that there is our delicious beef burger. And I'd like to extend a big thanks to the following county councils. Carlow, Cork, Donegal, Dublin City, Dunleary, Ratdown, Fingal, Kildare, Kilkenny, Leash, Longford, Roscommon, South Dublin, Westmeath, my own county of Wicklow, and of course, Stop Food Waste for taking part in this very important campaign.